All right, so I'm recording now. I'm with China, and China is working on this game, Magic Demolition. This is the logo so far. We're in the define period, moving into kind of painting. Um, so uh, we just shifted this to be um, a pink color because the white was a little bit too intense, um, and we couldn't see what was going on. So we, we picked this color together. So um, my, I, I'm loving that you have this eye is in the sword. I think the sword is really cool. And I think that that's functioning really nicely. My next would just be paint that sword up. Okay. So kind of render that out. So oh, yeah. um, I would do, um, just trying to understand your file here. There's your sketch thing. And this is your advice copy and you got your good naming. So I'm going to work above this stuff. So new layer. And I'm just going to call this paint. Um, and I'm going to just render this thing really quickly. So it's actually going to be a quick rendering lesson. Um, so I'm going to click I, pick this color from the background to push it into here and make it kind of metally. So B for brush, see what I have in bracketing down with the left bracket. I'm in the soft thing. Soft is actually going to be good, but first I want to select. So I'm going to hit L for lasso. And I want, because I'm going to get a hard edge, I'm going to get polygon lasso. I'm going to use this method of um, not painting here. Okay, you see how I've got a hard edge. I can paint soft against the hard edge. So um, that's what I'm going to do. But I also, so I want to use this, but I also don't want to paint on the outside. So where is this shape of the sword? Uh, it should just be called sword. Here? Yeah. Okay, so if I, um, Command shift click this. That might give me something. But what I'm going to do is um, command H to hide the dancing ants. Um, B for brush. Um, going to make this really big. And F5 for 50% opacity. And now, see, kind of instant light. Okay, kind of like the start of that. Now I'm going to hit smaller and we're going to go for a really textured brush. If I had installed my my brushes that I would like, I would have used the Jason Chan's um, brush, which is my favorite brush to use of all time, but these are okay to use for this painting method. Um, so I'm going to um, use that same color and just kind of like give a little bit of scratchiness. Now see, I can't paint onto that other part. It's, um, it's not selected. Did someone say something? Yeah, is your like brush pack, is that on the website so that we can have that too? It is, this right here, I just downloaded Photoshop. This is just coming right out of Photoshop. If we go to the um, to the concept and production site, um, I, I have it, let me um, show you. Okay, so the question is where are the brushes that Susan keeps talking about? If you go to logo design <laughs> and into logo depth, I have all these brushes um, here. And I'll show you how to get these brushes that I'm talking about, because I'm on a new machine. I would like to get the Bonner brushes too. Um, this Bonner share tool presets.tpl, I'm going to download these. China, you might have these already, because I've worked with you in another class before. Do you? Uh, I'm not sure, but I will definitely make sure I get them. OK, so Donner, bon <laughs> Donner, that's not my name. Bonner ah. Share Tools uh, TPL showing my finder. I like to put these into a um, into a folder called uh, brushes and presets. But right now I don't have like anything. This is the brand new thing. If you just have it sitting there, that that doesn't do the trick for you. You have to. Now are you seeing your Photoshop file? Am I sharing my full screen, China? Mm -hmm. So what you would do is you'd go, I like going to this. This is tool presets, which bring in not just the shape of the brush, but the color and the paint mode, which is becoming a really important thing. So if I want something to always be a glowy blue brush, I can tell it to by having it be in this, not in this. Most people use this. I love this part. If you click in this gear, and then you go to load tool presets, mm -hmm. and then you find them. So there they are, say open. It's going to give you an option. Um, import as brushes. That's part, a lot of people do that and that's fine. But I like them as tools because of that thing that I just told you. So now 
I have them here. Now, because I brought them in here, they're also in brushes. So no big deal either way. So I've got some cleanup brushes, which are totally sweet. But this Magic Arc, that's what I was talking about with the previous thing. And I'll show you this in a little bit. Jason's nice brush, though. That's my favorite brush. Also in the in the chat, I put some uh, a link to some of the brushes I use. Sweet. I'm going to hit are... E and then X to get white. And I'm just going to kind of get like a little bit of fine stuff going. And I would just spend some time painting on this, right? Um, and a little bit of blue action. Everything should be popping from this. And that, it would take me maybe another 45 minutes to get it going, to get painted. But I think that this should be painted. Um, and like this, this stuff needs to get some coolness to it. Yeah, I figure I can add some like gold or something. Maybe not gold. I don't know. I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, so. so let's let's show you the magic. And this is what I wasn't able to show in Hannah's previous piece. So I'm going to go up up here and call this magic. And so now I'm going to hit B for brush, bring myself up to here, and I'm going to go to the magic art. It will pick up whatever colors are here. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to find, um, I'll find the blue, but I want to make it really intense blue. So that's good for that color. And then I'm going to swap it. I, I don't want the magic to be dark. I want it to be fun and kind of magenta -y maybe. Okay, it's going to use those two colors together. And color dodge is the mode. Now, remember in that other brush, I didn't have that option. This brush is pretty sweet. Um, I think I have to deselect command C. So not quite doing what I want now. Let's see if I can see how it's like it's kind of glowing. Ooh. <laughs> so um, but okay, let's let's give it, let's make it go white. Because it really it works best when it's like see how it's got edges, that light, and it's also got this little oh, that's cool. Um so let's just study that. That's the way the brush works. And it gets this little outer glowy thing there. So if I command V a couple times and try to paint with it, I would do it around the star. And this is like little special extra things that you can add. And I think I want some paints. Like this is just fairies and loveliness, right? And probably even a glow around the back of this shape thing. Where's this big shape at? Um, That should be line, I this, think. This one? You think it's line? I think so, yes. Okay. So let's run a layer style on that. So layer, layer style, big glow. Outer glow. Um, size. Hmm. I kind of feel like I don't have the right thing. There it is. Something happened. You see that glowiness? Is it too soft? Screen normal. Screen is a is a highlight. Yeah. Oh. So I think you're almost there. We need a few more, like you're very, very close actually. You need some more painting, a little bit of glowiness to paint the sword up like you would paint it. And if you want to do your, like your style was a little bit more cell shading, China, go ahead and go with that too. Just make it more glow, like finish it up. It should um, be a really special thing. Did you have a tip? Hey, Susan? Yeah. Can you gotcha? So I'll just move it so over. I'll try to expand it just out to the outline to the edge of the D. Um, and then also for the stars, easiest way is to find a vectorized star. <laughs> yeah. And just plop it in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just to make it a little bit cleaner. Trust me, yeah. I've tried. I'll figure it out. But for some reason, when I do the star tool in Photoshop, it doesn't work. So. Oh, I don't mean like using like the uh, outline tool. Well, I'm, I not gonna like... just, I'm not going to just like plop in a star that already exists. You know, I got to do it myself. But you I can draw over it yourself. It. Absolutely not. It's just I like have a to because it's a personal thing. I'm stubborn. 
Oh, you may. I mean, you don't have to just use it. You can just use it as a, like an outline. Yeah, I did that, and then I I messed it up after. So I figured that the, oh. since this is since this is just the demo, I don't have to have it finished perfectly yet. So. Oh, true. Yeah. Okay, so I think you're at a really good place, Trina, and just you know a little bit more finesse and some glowiness. Um. Um. So is have the that white... sword cut me to the heart? <laughs> is the white What'd you say? The white that I did okay, or should I change it to a different color? Or I think it's I think it's functioning well. I think we're seeing the word magic a lot, and I think it could just be a little glowier. Like okay. it could use it could also use some glow edges. And like for the outline, like is it? Uh, I guess I'm trying to see how the pink would be incorporated exactly. The outline of what? Just like the pink in the background, how is that like, I'm trying to figure out how to, cause you know, I thought just the outline that I made is my logo, but like I need pink in the background too, or is that just to show- The logo always ends up on some color background yeah. of some kind. So what I'm suggesting is that it doesn't go on white. Okay, so like if I had a site or something, then the yeah. background would be pink. Yeah. Okay, I getcha. I just wanna make sure I understand. Yeah, yeah. So Are working in the color, context yeah. of something is always an important part of it. Okay, China, thank you. I'm going to see you later on this recording.